I don't know where the original thought came from, but I just finished making a film and we'd been shooting on a digital camera at night from a car and it looked so beautiful. I just, I thought that you could take footage of that and just put it on the screen and people would watch it. Um, and then I just wondered if there was a story that you could weave around one man's journey as he drove down um, an ordinary motorway. And the, the, the whole point of the whole thing was to take an ordinary man, an ordinary situation, an ordinary tragedy, and deal with it in the way that you would normally deal with a global tragedy or a national tragedy, that an individual's life falls apart and for them it's the end of the world. So it was just trying to bring a huge emotion down into a tiny space. Well, we tried to make it as obviously as simple as possible, but what we ended up doing was to do the whole script over and over again and shoot it as a play and have three cameras rolling at all times either inside the car or attached to the car um, and just run the whole thing beginning to end um, once or twice every night. Um, the only thing that stopped us was the memory of the cameras is 28 minutes or something so we had to stop, freeze everything, change the memory stick cards and then carry on. But you know, in the end we were lucky, we didn't have too many external complications, not too many people hooting their horns as they drove past, which was great. But we did shoot most of it very late or very late at night, very early in the morning. Uh, but we were lucky. In terms of writing, it was important to establish the importance to Ivan of the, of the various things in his life, in particular the work and his home. And, you know, I deliberately chose the, the, mo the, the least interesting thing, concrete. As the, as the difficulty, as the problem. You know, the concrete is just concrete. So to take that and try and make that interesting was the challenge. Um, and at each point was to take what people normally encounter in their normal lives and understand that for themselves, for ourselves, as ordinary people, our tragedies are huge and our mishaps and our mistakes all have consequences. So it was to try and bring everything down to the most basic and then just through the rhythm of how things happen to keep people the challenge was to make people understand and recognize themselves within the situation and i think once you've done that people won't lose interest because it's sort of themselves that they're looking at but without tom's performance which i think you will all agree is absolutely exceptionally brilliant it would mean nothing so really this film is about that performance and what tom did over a series of nights in very difficult situation, which I think is quite extraordinary, and, uh, and that's the point, that's the film. Um, as regard what the film is about, it is about fatherhood, yeah, and, um, you know, what it means to... Uh, the point being that a man can leave, he can go. He has that choice, a woman doesn't have that choice. Um, and it's about... What, you know, the choice that his dad made, obviously his dad left him. And who knows, through the generations of that family, in my imagination, you know, they were a family that were pretty much all over the place. And here's this man who made a decision before this night to make his life strong and simple and real and he'll stay and he'll be a good man. Then he makes this mistake and it's like, is fate telling me that I can't change things? Is this fate saying this is what you were always going to do? because that's what your dad did, your granddad, all the way through the generations. Is it in your genes that that's what you do, no matter how much good intention you had? And the journey is proof that he can do something different, I think. You know, whether you agree with it, because look at the consequence, it all falls to pieces, but he sticks to that one decision. The idea that at the very, very end, the idea was to, when you see lots of different lights, the point being that we've just looked at one journey, and then you see all these other journeys, and each, within each bubble of light, there's everybody having their own journey as well, and who knows what's going on? Who knows how big or small the tragedies and happinesses are in there? So the idea of, what I want to do is look at a motorway, which is the most mundane and routine thing in the world, and just by looking at that, at the end of the film, hopefully, you will think, well, look at all them stories, you know. Look at all those different eventualities. So that was the point of ending that. Hopefully that's a trick of the, of the film, is that you think, well, he's right and everyone else is wrong. If you look at it 
objectively, she's right. His wife's right. Uh, you know, he, he, he did this thing. Um, and if, if you look at that from an objective point of view, we're now saying, why don't you forgive him? But he's the one that needs to be forgiven. I think that she has got absolutely a very strong moral position. I don't think she's... You could argue maybe this is a moment that was going to happen. Maybe she wasn't so upset that this had happened. Maybe this was something that she knew was going to happen. Not knew was going to happen in this sense, but maybe she wanted to get out of this marriage, you know. And I don't think that... Everything is through Locke's eyes because it's called Locke and we're with him and everything's from his point of view. But I think if you look away from it and you look at the, the moral issue, I don't think that Locke is necessarily... We're not saying he's right and brave and strong in everything because he's not. You know, I think he makes lots of mistakes. He hurts lots of people. It's not, it's not his wife who hurts people.